you have such like a it's you're not sitting in a playroom like you have like a formal office like you raided west elm or pottery barn and you're like in a grown space what's up with that i got all this for you i love it i mean that's, that's what i <laughs> for do. the podcast yeah it was either this or you know i have a giant crayola crayon behind me and i, I decided to go with this and this is perfect for our audio only podcast but i've grown up i love it <laughs> we've grown up Oh man, I can't believe. Yeah, we've been doing this a while. Yeah, but so yeah. What were we... you saying? You, were you guys? You guys were hitting the road. Like, were you traveling together? I used to drag him everywhere. I loved it. <laughs> and I used <laughs> to make him fly American too, which he totally <laughs> loves. And we couldn't go direct. This was like several years ago. This week as well, because I got the notification. It was like a random Tuesday, and I was in Orlando, and Chris is like, "We got to go to Arizona on Thursday," and I was like, "Fine." I was like, "But hey, I hate to be that guy." Would you mind booking my flight? And he's like, not a problem. So we left the next morning at a BWI. We landed in the beautiful Mile High city of Denver. We rushed to our connection, then got to Arizona, had like a, probably a giant Mexican meal, filmed our thing, and then we went to a minor league Dodgers game, <laughs> up all day, and then took the red eye back from Arizona through Newark. So I got up at like 2 a.m. on Wednesday to drive to BWI because Chris booked the flights. I got there before security even opened. Not that I'm bitter about this, before security even opened. <laughs> we then got there and we basically got home like Saturday morning at like 7 a.m. into Dulles. I picked up Heather, who was just my girlfriend at the time, and we drove straight to, straight to Lansdowne for a wedding. I hadn't slept in like two days. I smelled like minor league baseball, cheap airline seats. What was that hot dog like wrapped in like green chilies and bacon? And it was a blast. I took Anthony to all the hot spots. All the hot. You can't say we never had a good time traveling yeah. together. It was a blast. <laughs> we, we it was it was a blast. But so and that's that's one of the things I want you to talk about today. Not just our great travel woes and 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 meals, but you, Carfax, and you in particular have always done such a good job of being ahead of the needle and ahead of the message. You are out there communicating with local folks, just putting out the positive messaging. That way, God forbid something bad happened everybody would find the positives because you guys were just always ahead of the communication curve. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to chat with you today. And now I see your title has shifted to like career and team building. And you guys have also always crushed it in like best places to work. Yeah. So lots to talk about. Um, I have to jump to a meeting, but you have something more important to do than this to talk with me. I'm stunned. Well, good to see you. Give everybody our love and um, have fun. You too, brother. Tell uh, Heather I was All right. Be good guys. Thanks, Bree. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. That's so funny. <laughs> have you started one of your podcasts like that yet? I don't no, think so. <laughs> no, have not. <laughs> um, okay, so can you just start by introducing yourself? I certainly can. Uh, my name is Chris Basso. Uh, I am also known as Carfax Chris. Uh, um, I have been with Carfax for almost 18 years now. Wow. Started in public relations and for the last uh, several years uh, moved to uh, employee experience. So I am now part of the HR team. And uh, yeah, I've been doing that for the last few years, uh, transitioning from talking about what we do uh, as a company in public to talking about the great culture, our people. Uh, and what we do to recruiters, uh, our employees. I make work fun. I mean, that's that's the way I describe my job. I'm part of the team that makes work fun, and you can't beat that. So first, can we talk about sort of what you mean by you were the public, telling the public, trying to get ahead of messaging, talking about messaging. Are these produced videos that you were releasing out into the open? Were you, were you creating videos that were then on standby in case of emergency? It was kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, the main part of my job in public relations and, and what our public relations director does now is making sure that you know, the millions of people that are buying used cars every day are aware of the problems that exist, you know, but also are aware of what things they need to arm themselves with to make a good purchase to take care of their car the right way, to know that they're paying the right price. And so we're constantly out there talking to news stations, primarily television stations, but you know, radio stations, newspapers, all the media outlets to provide information about what scams may be out there, what are the things that people need to be on the lookout for or what they need to do to make an educated purchase. And as part of that, we would talk to consumers about you know things that happen to them. And that's where Anthony and I teamed up. We traveled around the country telling consumer stories. So it's really a storytelling 
role. You're using the experiences of real people to help warn people and educate other people about what's going on out there and what they need to do to make a good decision about a used car, whether it's buying it, selling it, or taking care of it during the time that you own it. And even more so now, we've gotten into the world of social media, on TikTok and Instagram, because you know, there's this next generation of people that are going to be buying cars and, and we want them to know Carfax and who we are. Yeah, you know, that's the the next uh, the next foray, the next frontier that we're we're crossing right now. Right. We actually spoke to Sarah Calabari recently about what she's pushing for is an awareness campaign for companies. So not just here's an ad we want you to click on our website and use us immediately. And if you don't, then that ad failed. But more just being a part of your life. People just knowing Carfax is a, a brand that is kind of like always monitoring cars for them, always on the lookout for them so that when they need a car, they think of you right away. Exactly. That's what you're kind of talking about, where it ties in. You're you're providing information. Yeah, it's you know the the brain can only retain so much information, and you know we are bombarded with information from companies every single day, thousands and thousands of them. Getting top of mind for consumers and remaining in a part of their brain for when they think about something that they're buying, like a car, is hard work. And so you know we've got a fantastic team of people at Carfax that are doing the hard work to make sure that we remain top of mind. And when you look at the the brand awareness that we have, we've definitely carved out a part in a lot of people's brains. You know, we've got our mascot, the car fox that's there, but you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And so it's it's rarefied air when when you can carve out a little part. And, and you know, we continue to try to to do that with the millions of people that we that we help every day. Yeah. And is there sort of like a secret sauce or a formula? Is it posting regularly? Is it posting on all platforms? Is it just a high budget commercials? Like what is the what is the general goal with that kind of stuff? It's a little bit of everything, right? It's, you know, people are, are everywhere. They're consuming media uh, in all different ways. And so it's about being where the people are, being where your customers are. Uh, and with Carfax, you know, everybody needs a car. You know, so when you watch a sporting event, you'll see Carfax commercials with Carfax educating people about, uh, you know, how we help people avoid accident vehicles or know the history of the car. You'll see us on TikTok and Instagram, and then you'll see us on, on LinkedIn uh, talking about the culture that we have and, and the awards uh, that we've won for being a great workplace. So it all kind of comes together in the end to really build that brand awareness and that employer brand awareness helping people and bringing on, you know, the talented people that we want to join our team. Well, so culture seems really important to you and to Carfax. How did you change over? What was that transition like from from making those types of videos and messages to then working on internal culture? So it, it really was what I mentioned before. It was, you know, telling the story of what we do to an external audience that may not know who we are or what we do to telling the story internally. And then showing people the the great culture, the talented people, everything that makes Carfax a great place to work. In my mind, it was kind of a natural transition. It, it's all communications. It's just the audience that you're talking to. Hmm. Well, I mean, you, you've you worked at the same company for 18 years. So how has the importance of culture changed since you've started working? I think it's gotten more important. Um, you know, I think a few years ago, I think it was Glassdoor that did a survey uh, that showed something like 75% of people that were job searching actually thought that the culture of a business was more important than what they were being paid, mm. which was which was really eye-opening. But it, it talks about uh, and underscores the importance of having a great culture where you work. You know, you, you need to believe in the business. You need to believe in the products or the services that you offer. But you also have to enjoy what you're doing. And part of that is... Uh, you know, the people that you're working with every day, it's the place that you're going to. And, you know, as, as more companies are bringing their, their employees back post pandemic, you know, that office experience is really important. You don't, you don't just want to bring people back to bring them back because there's no, there's no motivation behind that. And there's no real incentive for them. But when you have a great place to work, when you have camaraderie with your teammates, that's really the important thing. And Money will always be important. Let's not th get that wrong. <laughs> but it, but that's only part of it. You, you really got to love what you do and where you do it to really be happy. 
This might seem overly simplistic, but what is it that makes people happy <laughs> in the office? <laughs> free sandwiches, free food, right? That yeah. makes people happy. The weekly oh. birthday party. Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I think it, it, it changes with every single person, right? You know, you have your introverts and you have your extroverts. So what made one, one side happy may not make the other side happy, but you got to find a balance for everybody. Um, but you know, the key is you, you got to celebrate your wins, no matter how you do it. You, know, you got to show people that the fruits of their hard work are, are paying off and they pay off with the celebrations. You know, we accomplished this. Uh, you know, we reached this goal. At Carfax, I, I think we do a phenomenal job. We, we measure everything. So we're constantly keeping ourselves accountable uh, for what we want to accomplish. And when we reach those goals, we go all out and celebrate. You know, we have regular happy hours. We do uh, a business update every other month with our team where we're um, talking about things that are going on around the business that, you know, the majority of people may not know about. And because we have you know, uh, we have people around the country in several offices, but also, you know, working from home and in Canada, the key is to keep people connected as well. Uh, and I think the, the pandemic taught us a lot about that, that even though you're separate, you can still be engaged, but there's different ways to do that. So we've learned a lot about how to do it successfully. I think we're still learning how to do it successfully, but in, in some of those, you know, those key communications that we do, those celebrations, no matter where you are, they really help to bring you together. Hmm. Yeah, you. it sounds like you were already a bit remote before COVID, or at least the offices were separated. And so already making it feel more human when it's that big is a chat, I'd imagine a challenge, but then obviously the pandemic hit and the remote people got more remote. <laughs> Even be before the pandemic, just the way our business is set up, we've got people around the country uh, that are visiting the dealers that we're partnered with every single day. So there was a natural, uh, you know, remote aspect to our workforce. Um, but you know, the pandemic made us even more, more remote. We all worked from home, but we, we already had that kind of ingrained in our culture. So coming back to the office, you know, we want to make sure that people stay connected. We want to make sure that there's a, a reason for them to come into the office every day. And it's not just, just to check a box. Really it's that it's that togetherness and the connectedness that we have with each other that helps us remain successful. What are some examples of evidence that it's working? <laughs> are there examples of evidence you use to think, okay, everyone's excited to show up to work today? Well, sir, I, I think the surveys are, are a big thing, but you know, the biggest thing for us, uh, the evidence is the fact that we continue to win great place to work awards, uh, not only here in the DC area, but in our office uh, in Columbia, Missouri, uh, in our office in London, Ontario, uh, and so the ability to continue to, to win those things because they are based off of employee surveys, um, it's, it's our team earning that. And it's, it's the culmination of the hard work that we've done to keep our team engaged, uh, to provide a great culture, whether it's through, through uh, free food, uh, bringing dogs to our office, providing you know great benefits, uh, perks that are outside of your typical medical and dental, but reinforcing that work-life balance for people that's so important the real evidence is is those great place to work awards and, and we're super proud of them and and we continue to to earn them our team continues to earn them uh even this year we've got some exciting announcements coming out really shortly um uh, about it as well so we're excited about that all right everybody stay tuned <laughs> uh, how many people work at carfax we've got over 1300 people that are in the U.S. and Canada, Canada is our, our fastest growing office. Um, it's a fantastic culture up there. It's really cool. It's a it's an old Kellogg's cereal factory that's been converted. It, it's just it's a really amazing space. You know, you've got your office space, and then there's retail. There's like a Shaw's ice cream. There's a Starbucks. Uh, so there's great places to go. And then in the main part of the factory where all the cereal used to be made, uh, there's this place called the factory which is like this indoor amusement park there's zip lines and trampolines wow it, it's it's a really unique experience and uh and our team is really excited about going up there <laughs> anthony's gonna be so mad when he hears about that <laughs> he's talking about newark and layover flights and you're talking about zip lines yeah don't tell him about that part until <laughs> later 
<laughs> so it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great office, but you know, here in here in the DC area, you know, we've got tons of fun things. It, it's and it's little it's little touches, right? So each office has its own you know, unique uh, unique touches that make it a really cool experience. And then you know, for for all of our remote folks too, you know, we do a lot of things through video conferencing on Zoom uh, to keep people connected. So um, that that togetherness is is a a big theme throughout Carfax. No, that's great. And then so I guess like looking externally, the importance of having a company that enjoys their work and enjoys working together and enjoys where they work physically, the offices. I'm sure that that has consequences externally like t- towards how well your products working or coordination or how people perceive the company itself or or even um, when when you do have a sort of a crisis or a PR moment, you can rally together. Is that true? I, I think so. Yeah, you have to have you have to have a clear mission. Number one, and you got to have belief in that mission uh, across your team. Everybody kind of needs to own a part of, of what that mission is. Our mission is to help millions of people, and we do it through through great data and leading products. Um, so no matter if people are shopping for a car, uh, buying a car. You know, during the time that they own it, or when it comes time to sell it, your Carfax is there with trusted information to help them make good decisions. Eighteen years is a really long time to work at one place. You keep reminding me about that. <laughs> I think <laughs> is there... <laughs> the longest I've ever worked somewhere is Istrico, and I just hit five years, and I'm like, that's so crazy. Congratulations! <laughs> Thirteen more to go. Yeah, what, 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 like just broadly speaking, just generally for anyone, what do you think keeps people coming back? I know it's kind of a new phenomenon, job, job jumping as much as people are. So, what is, what is it that keeps people in place, do you think? Yeah, it's funny. I, I've been there for almost 18 years and, and I'm still kind of a baby when you look at some of the other folks that have been there. You know, we've got, uh, we've got a member of our senior team that's been there. It'll be 30 years this year. Wow. Our CEO is celebrating 20 years at Carfax this year. So Carfax is kind of a unique place. It's a little bit of a unicorn um, when it comes to longevity. And I think it comes down to we do have a clear mission and people are bought into it. You know, we know what we want to do um, and we work hard to do it. It comes down to having, you know, a strong playbook, defined values that that people believe in and how we play, using things like the wisdom of crowds and finding solutions and not dwelling on problems. What's um, the wisdom of crowds? Wisdom of crowds is a bringing people together to help solve a problem. You're not making decisions in a vacuum. We know that we're smarter together. And when we can use the wisdom of crowds and get opinions that don't match with our own, you actually come to better solutions. And it's it's not about slowing the process down. It's about looking at things from all perspectives and, and making sure that you know, you're making an educated decision, just like we do for consumers, providing all the information, all the perspectives, so that you're you're choosing the right path on the way to go. This has been super succinct. So I feel like we got a lot of really good stuff. Is there something that you wanted to bring up? I think you've covered a lot, especially the travels that Anthony and I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's always been fun. You know, I, I think back to what, one of my favorite things that we did. We got an email from a consumer in Delaware that talked about a, a, a recall that was on his truck. And his truck caught fire and very nearly burned his house down <sighs> because of it. Um, so... As soon as I got that email, I called Anthony. I'm like, Anthony, we got to go to Delaware. We got to talk to this guy. And so we went out there, we interviewed him, and it was just, it was an extremely powerful video. Just hearing what happened, getting B roll and pictures of the truck and the damage that happened to it, simply because of this recall that happened um, underneath the, the driver's seat, of all things. You know, had he been driving this truck and the thing caught fire, wow. it, it could have been way worse. So it was it was really a powerful um, powerful experience for us, and it kind of kind of captured the the importance of making sure that people had information so they can take action on it. Um, so I just I, I remember driving up that day, and it was one of my favorite memories. I think not only you know working with Anthony, um, but working at Carfax and, and being able to tell 
that one person's story to help millions of people. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you don't really think about it all the time is because it's just a brand, but it's also a platform um, and you guys are experts. So uh, sharing those stories is a way to share information. Yeah, it, it's it's real life. I mean, it's not just a platform. You're, you're taking these these real stories, things that happen to consumers that you, you think couldn't happen to anybody. You know, buying a car with a rolled back odometer. People thought it, it could never happen anymore. And it turns out, you know, it, it's easier than ever to do. And, and people are taking 100, 200,000 miles off of the car's odometer and rip it off somebody who's spending, you know, their last penny in their savings just to be able to afford a car that they can get to uh, to work and make a living for their family. So I, you know, you asked about what keeps people at Carfax. I, I, I think that's the number one thing is Carfax is for everybody because everybody needs a car. And when you see those, you see those heart wrenching stories of how one person is affected because maybe they didn't do the, all the research that they needed. And when you can, when you can use that story in a positive way to help other people, and you know you're providing the information that's going to help other people avoid that one issue, that keeps you going every day. And quite honestly, I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking oh. about it because it, it, it really is, it, it's a really powerful thing knowing that you can affect people's lives in terms of, fin of financially, but also more importantly, in terms of safety. Now tell me about the nicest, fanciest trip you went on that Anthony missed out on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the best meal you ever had oh, <laughs> on the <man>. road. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time and talking through, um, I guess, sort of like a little double episode. It was a, a little bit about the, the need for video as an informational tool, but also the need for employees to be inspired and galvanize around a message and share information that way too you've kind of captured my life a little bit of this and a little bit of that yeah that's great <laughs> thank you Brady. it's been a real pleasure talking to you i appreciate uh you guys having me on and and being a part of it it's uh, something i'm happy to do anytime thank you take care that's all for this week again i'm your host Bree. thank you for tuning into the strict and we will be back in two weeks <laughs>